Really glad to be in your school this afternoon. I've brought something slightly different with me today. Here we go, pop your hands back down, because all of you are going to need to be involved today. Because this is my story box, and the way my story box works is I need every single one of you to help me. Do you think you can do that this afternoon? Yeah! Excellent. Well, if I open this up by here, the way my story box works is I've got lots and lots of pictures inside my story box. And when I hold it up, I need you to say what's on the picture, and then it keeps our story going. OK. But in order for you to do that, I need to introduce you to the two main characters in our story today so that you'll know what their names are. The first one is this man by here. He's called Goliath. It's a bit of a strange name, isn't it? But should we give it a try? Here we go. Goliath. Excellent. So whenever you see that, you just say Goliath. And the other person in our story today is a young boy, this one by here, and he is called David. So whenever you see this... Excellent. So, should we try it again? Here we go. Excellent. OK, so hopefully most of the rest you'll be able to guess as we go along, but we'll sort of see how we're going and hopefully things will be fine. But anyway, we'll start off our story today with... David. And um, you see, he was the youngest of all of his brothers. And all of his older brothers had actually gone off to do something really, really important. And so he'd been left at home to look after the... Because you see, he worked back in those days. He had a very special job as a... Shepherd. Excellent. And you see, it was actually a very dangerous job back in those days. Because you see, in the place where... Lived, there were actually lions and bears, and they would come to try and attack the sheep. And so he would have to scare them off, which I imagine would have been really, really scary because if a lion or a bear was coming towards me, I'd probably run in the other direction. But you see, he knew that things would be okay because you see, he knew he had someone else helping him. You see, the Bible tells us that was actually one of a special group of people called the Israelites, who the Bible says are the special people of... Now, that looks a bit confusing, doesn't it? It looks like I've just put some random letters on a piece of card, but let me explain to you, OK? The Israelites had a very special name for God, and this was their name for God. They called him Yahweh. But instead of trying to say that, when you see this, you just need to say God. So should we go to go? Excellent. So, you see, David knew that he was one of the special people of... And so he knew whatever was going on, even if it was a lion or bear or something like that, then... would be with him and would help him, which was great. But you see, in the place where the Israelites lived, there were lots of people surrounding them who didn't like... And so often, these people would come to try and have a... with the Israelites. And they would have to try and fight off their enemies and get rid of them. And you know, the Bible actually says that we have lots and lots of enemies, but they're not really the same as the enemies the Israelites used to have. Our enemies aren't a great huge army, but actually our enemies are things like bad thoughts and bad words and bad actions, things we know we shouldn't be doing. And actually, the Bible says we're in a bit of a against those to try and be the best people we can be, to be as good as we can be. And actually, the Bible says we need some help to be able to do that. But I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Well, anyway, at this time, a great huge army of people called the Philistines had come to have a fight with the Israelites. Now, we know, don't we, that we should never, ever have a fight because that's never a good way to sort things out. No matter what's wrong, no matter what's happening, having a is not the way we should deal with things. We should talk to each other and try to work out what's wrong and sort out our differences in a better way. But back in those days, that's what they used to do. And anyway, out from the Philistine Army. stepped a great, huge giant who was called Goliath. Goliath. And actually, you see, because sometimes back in those days, they did things differently. Instead of everybody having one great, huge you would just get one champion from each side and they would have a fight. And whoever won would be the winner. And so that's just what happened. Out from the Philistines stepped Goliath and he gave a bit of a challenge. He said, just send your greatest champion against me. Whoever wins will be the winner. But you see, there was a problem. You see, wasn't a normal man. He was actually really, really... 
In fact, he was a giant. The Bible says he was over three meters tall and he had a great huge spear and a shield and everything as well. And so when the Israelites saw him, probably their knees started to knock together. They were really, really scared and afraid because he was so, so And they thought there's no way that anybody is going to be able to go and have a with him and win. They were so, so scared. You see, the person who should have gone was actually the But he was so scared as well, he didn't want to go. And it was all because the giant was so, so And you know, there are things in our lives that make us feel scared or worried or afraid, and they might not be a giant, but they could still be pretty things. It might be that there's a bully and you just don't know what to do about it or there's a subject in school that seems so that you think how on earth am I going to remember all these things my brain just isn't that but the amazing thing is that whenever we're feeling scared or worried or afraid is that there are always people around to help us we have our friends who are able to help us with things which are great we have our mums and dads who can help us with things which is amazing but also we have our teachers whose job it is to help us when we're feeling that a bit stuck and unsure what to do when we're in school. But as well as all of those things, the Bible says we also have God who wants to help us because he loves each and every one of us so much. And actually, he knows what's going on with us. So he knows when we feel scared or afraid or worried. And he wants to help if we're just willing to call out to him and ask for help. But anyway, at this point, we're still back at home looking after the... And his dad came to him and he said, I've got some bread and some cheese here. Will you leave the with me and um, head up to see your brothers um, who are up in the and come back to tell me how the is going. Uh, Well, he was so, so excited. He'd been wanting to go and see how things were going. So he raced up to where the two were to see what was going on. And it was just at that time of day when he arrived, when out from the Philistines stepped to give his challenge. Because you see, because everyone was so, so scared, he'd actually been going out for 40 days and giving his challenge, but still no one was willing to have a with him. So he gave the same challenge he'd given on every other day. He said, send your greatest champion against me. Whoever wins will be the winner. And then we don't all have to have a great huge. Well, nobody was willing to go. I say nobody. That is except for. He turned around to the other people near him. He said, why is nobody going to challenge the giant? Don't you realize that by saying the things he's saying, he's actually speaking against God. And so if you go against him, then you will know that God will be with you and he will help you. Now, his brother said to him, look, you're only young. You don't know what you're talking about. Be quiet. But other people heard what he was saying. And so he got taken before the himself and the said, are you really willing to go and with the giant, have you not seen how he is and how huge his spear and shield are? But you see, said he said, look, when I was looking after the lions and bears would come to attack them, but I was able to scare them off because I knew that was with me. And if I go to have a with the giant, then I know that will be with me then as well. And so things will be OK. Well, It took a bit of persuading, but eventually the said, okay, I'll let you go. But you need to take my armor with you, my shield and my spear and my sword and everything else. Well, wasn't too sure, but he said, okay, then. But there was a problem. You see the, well, he was really not as, as the giant, but he was still pretty. And well, was only a young boy, so he was quite small. And so when he put on all the armor, it was so heavy and so big, it was sort of weighing him down. He couldn't even walk. He thought, I can't go like this. This is crazy. You see, he realized that didn't want him to do things in that way. And instead, he just had to take the things he took when he was a... So he just took his shepherd's staff, he took five stones, and he took his sling. Because he realized that's what... 
wanted him to do. And you know, sometimes we don't, we shouldn't just be people that follow everybody else and do what everyone else is doing, but sometimes we need to do things differently when we realise that what everyone else is doing is wrong. You might have heard adults sometimes say to you, just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you should do it too. And that's the thing we know, don't we, that if people are doing things that are wrong or bad, actually we shouldn't just copy them, but we should do things that are good and right, even if everybody else seems to be doing things that are wrong. And that's just what realised. He realised that he just needed to trust in and everything would be okay. And so he went out in front of the Israelite and out from the other side stepped and when he saw him he started to laugh. He said, you, you, they've sent you. Is there nobody in the whole of Israel who is really, really that they send someone tiny against me. And then he saw that he'd brought just the things he would take when he was a shepherd. And he said, what do you think I am? Do you think I'm a dog that you come to fight me with sticks and stones? This is going to be so, so easy. This is going to be the easiest I have ever, ever had. I am going to win so easily. But then said, it might look like it's just me here. But you see, you've been speaking against And so he is going to help me. And then he put a stone into his sling. He swung it around his head one, two, three times. He launched it and the stone started to fly up and it hit the giant right in the middle of his head. He started to wobble. He started to fall and with a huge crash, he landed on the floor and actually had won. And it was all because he trusted in and you know, the Bible says that God promised to send another young champion like to come and defeat the problems that we have. The things I talked about earlier, like our bad thoughts and bad words and bad actions. And actually, he said that this champion was going to come and was going to live a perfect life. He wasn't going to think a single bad thing. He wasn't going to say a single bad thing. He wasn't going to do a single bad thing. But he was going to live a perfect life. And then at the end of his life, the Bible says that he was going to go and die on a cross to actually forgive us of all the things we've done wrong you see the bible says that that champion was going to be jesus who the bible says is and so actually as he died there he was going to take all the things that we've done wrong so that we could be forgiven if we put our trust in him just like well when the philistine saw their champion lying on the floor. They realised they'd lost and they were really scared, so they turned and ran away as quick as they possibly could. And then the whole Israelite cheered because they realised their champion had won and he'd been able to do it all because he trusted in... And you know, I've made lots and lots of decisions in my life, but actually I made a decision when I was the same age as... And I think it's still the best decision I ever made. Because the decision I made was to trust in God. Just like David. And actually, I think it's the best decision because I know that I trusted in him because he loved me and was willing to die on the cross for me and for all the things I'd done wrong. And actually, it means that I know no matter what's going on in my life, that God is always there and with me to help me just like he was there for David. in our story today. And so, that's the story of David and Goliath from my story box. And I hope you enjoyed it, but I hope you remember as well that actually, sometimes we might feel scared or afraid or worried about different things, but actually, there are always people around to help us. People like our friends, our mum and dads, our teachers, but as well, the Bible says that God will help us because he loves us so, so much. You've listened really well this afternoon. I just want to end this part of our assembly with a quiet prayer. So we just quietly put our hands together, close our eyes. I'm going to say a prayer, which is just speaking to God, and then I'm going to say amen at the end, which just means I agree. And so if you agree with me, I'd encourage you to say amen after me. God, I thank you so, so much for all the wonderful, incredible stories in your Bible. God, I thank you for David and how he was able to do amazing things because he trusted in you. But God, I pray that you help to remind us that when we feel scared or worried or afraid, that there are always people around that can help us if we just call out and ask for help. Amen.